Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn on physics in the 3D world and model a component so that it can be affected by physical forces. To get started, let's add some components to our layout. I'll go to the eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, I'll click Basic Shapes. Let's now add a block geo to the 3D world, a cylinder, and let's add a sphere. So let's drag that item in. Now we have three components in the 3D world, and notice they're on the floor of the 3D world. So let's actually raise them above the floor. I'll hold on the control key and add the cylinder to my selection and a block, so I have three components selected. I'll then turn on the move tool, and let's move the components up along the floor, along that z-axis. And now what do we expect to happen if we turn on physics in the 3D world? Well, the force of gravity should move these components back down to the floor. To do that, let's go and turn on the physics by running the simulation. So if I click play on the simulation controls, physics is turned on in the 3D world, but nothing is happening. That's because these three components, they're not being affected by the physical forces. Now if you want to turn off physics, you can either stop the simulation or reset it. And to make a component affected by physics, you need to add what's called a physics entity behavior. And what that means is you're taking a component and making it a physical body, which is then in the system of physics. So to give you an example, let's select the block here. I'll then go to the Modeling tab, and in the Behavior group, I'll click Behaviors. And under Physics, notice here are the physics behaviors we have. And we're just concerned with the physics entity behavior in this video. So I'll click to add the behavior. And notice in the Behavior Properties, that for the physics entity, it has one property called Physics Type. And this controls whether or not the node that contains this physics entity is in the physics or being affected by physics in the 3D world. So physics type, you can see by default it's set to be in physics. So if I was to start the simulation, notice the block falls down to the floor and it's geometry in that same node. Now if I was to interact with this component while the simulation is running, notice I can apply some force to the component or that object with the mouse pointer. But if I was to stop the simulation and try to move the block, notice that physics is turned off, it's not moving. And if I want to reset the component back to its initial configuration or its initial state at the start of the simulation, just reset, and notice physics is no longer on, it's turned off, and I can't apply any force to the object. And another thing to realize about a physics entity behavior is you can turn off the effect of physics in a component locally. So if I go back to the properties panel, I can set physics type to be out of physics, and now if I start the simulation, notice the block is not being affected by the force of gravity, you know, it's not falling down to the floor. And likewise, I can apply a force with the mouse pointer, the block is just staying put. So if I reset, Notice that you can turn off physics locally in a component using that physics entity behavior. Now the other choices you have are kinematic and container. So kinematic is just concerned with the motion of the component or that body in a system, for example, a physics path, which you'll learn about in another video. So if I was to start the simulation, notice the, you know, the component's not longer going down to the floor. It's not being affected by that force of gravity. It's just based on what's pushing the component, so or some type of force applied to it. So if I reset, notice the component goes back to that initial position. Now for in container, this is mostly concerned when the physics body is uh, in some type of a physics, physical container, so in a bucket, or in this case the 3D world itself. So if I was to start the simulation, notice that yes, that force of gravity is affecting this physical body here, so it just falls down to the floor. So let's reset. And now let's say we want these other components to be physical bodies in the simulation as well. So I'll select this cylinder here, and then I'll go to the behavior group, click Behaviors, add the physics entity, and if I start the simulation, notice now both components fall down to the floor. Now let's reset, and now let's add a physics entity behavior to the sphere. Now another way to add a physics entity behavior is to add a collider to a component. So right now in the component graph panel, I'm working in the root node of the sphere, and it has one feature, and notice it doesn't have any behaviors right now. So what I can do is I can make this feature, or its geometry, collide with other objects in physics. So to do that, I'll go to the Feature Properties panel, expand this Physics section here, and notice it has a property called Collider. And what you're doing is you're making a shape around the geometry, which can then collide with other Collider-type objects in your layout. So you can set Collider to be None. It can be a box, so that creates kind of a box around this sphere. And notice, since no physics entity behavior existed in the component beforehand, the application automatically adds this physics behavior for me in the component. And notice it's set to be in physics. So if I start the simulation, notice that now all three components fall to the floor. 
So let's reset and select that sphere feature again. Notice when you have a collider set to box, you can apply some padding or some offset for the collider. You can also have this option for precise, and this tries to make a precise type of shape around the geometry of the feature. So let's actually set this back to box. And what we can do is let's actually make the sphere collide with this block here. So let's actually select the block component. And I'm going to make sure I'm working with the component, so I'll select the root node of the component here in the component graph panel. And let's reset the Z coordinate of the component back to zero. And now let's move the sphere above that block. So this is the feature. I actually need to work at the component level. So I'll select the root node of the sphere. I'll then move it over the block. And it's, let's make it a bit higher. And since this sphere has a collider, it will collide with this physical body and either stay put based on the friction or bounce off. So let's actually move it right there. And I think the sphere will probably stay on top of the block if I run this simulation. So let's run the simulation. Notice the block, I'm sorry, the sphere kind of wobbled a bit, but it's still on top of this block, which is affected by physics as well. So let's actually make the sphere bounce off the block. And start the simulation again. And notice, yep, it bounces off. It collided with this cylinder here that's also in physics, and then it dropped down to the floor. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before ending the video is how the physics entity is per node in a component. So just because you have one node in a component, the root node affected by physics, does not mean all the other nodes in the component will be as well. So to give you an example, let's reset the simulation. And let's actually move the block away from these other two components. And just move it above the floor. Now let's go and add another node to this component. So in the structure group, I'll click Create Link. And now let's create some offset for that link. So let's actually move it over here. And if you want to show the structure of the component, just go back to the structure group and select this show checkbox here. So here's the root node, and here's that new link I created in the component. Let's now add some geometry to that link. So in the geometry group, I'll click Features, and let's add a cone. And just resize it a bit, so I'll change its height in the Feature Properties panel to be 200. Uh, let's make it bigger than that. Come on, 500. That's good. And its radius for its bottom radius to be, let's make 300. That looks fine. And now, notice this cone is in a different node in the component, and the root node of the component has this block here and a physics entity behavior. So if I was to start the simulation, notice that the block drops down to the floor because the root node has that physics, physics entity behavior, but this link in the component does not have a physics entity behavior. So only one node in this component is being affected by physics, whereas it has another node that's not. So be aware of that when you're modeling a component for physics. So if I was to interact with this block, notice I can apply some force to it. I can push around those other components kind of like a bully. <laughs> Let's do that again real quick. Let's see if I can make it hit the cylinder. There we go. There we go. Yeah, take out that frustration. But notice the cylinder is a staying put. So if I was to reset the simulation, notice everything goes back to what it was before. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And I hope you have a wonderful day.